have you ever wanted to do a redo uh, in this financial audit by Caleb Hammer of Joey uh, 25 year old who is now bankrupt um, I wanted to share this financial audit with you and my review and uh, my thoughts on bankruptcy and um, how you can recover from bankruptcy if you are in this situation. Uh, first of all, Joey uh, did a joint venture with his mother and they started a restaurant. And it was right before the pandemic hit and uh, the first year in business, they were doing well. And then the pandemic hit and, and all of a sudden, all the money that the, the business was producing just went to zero and um, they had all this debt, um, over $100,000 in debt that they had occurred opening the business, starting the business and in hopes that the business would, would pay off the debt over time. So they ended up having to follow bankruptcy. So they ended up having to file bankruptcy. And in the meantime, Joey moved on with his life after filing bankruptcy, got a job as a salesperson, is doing relatively okay. It's just that he has no credit and he's got to live within his means um, with his sales job and his sales job is not a it fluctuates on how much he makes per week according to the number of sales that he made number of chargebacks and those type of things drawbacks that uh, occur during his weekly process of sell, selling that occurred during his weekly process of selling things on the internet. I mean, so anyways, Caleb Hammer is interviewing him and he's going over his finances. And I just wanted to talk briefly about bankruptcy and how you get in this situation. Similar to Joey's story, um, you go in and you start a business and you think that things are just going to go as normal, right? You think that things are, are just going to be the same as it's always been and you don't realize that the economy, technology, and the world around you changes very, very quickly, especially in the last 20 years of things, right? So the internet the idea of smartphones where you get, everybody has a video camera the uh, YouTube itself you know wasn't a thing back in 2000 it wasn't until 2005 that YouTube was even available to share video content like this and uh, so if you think that you're going to do business as usual um, you get, now you got nowadays you got things like cryptocurrency and other technologies that are transforming the way that we do business. So there's a lot of things to to take in consideration when you are starting a business. And I can relate to this bankruptcy thing because I went through bankruptcy in 2005 after losing three businesses that I had run and. Uh, I filed bankruptcy for five hundred thousand dollars, a half million dollars in debt that had occurred from my three businesses that I had um, had operated up to that point. And for a while, those businesses were successful and profitable. And then technology changes. So one business that I had was a video production business where I would create videos um, and I was booked every single weekend for wedding events and I was making $4,000 a weekend um, 
doing wedding events. I also had a direct mail business. And I had a another business where I was taking orders from tele, uh, what do you call those? Infomercials. I was taking orders from infomercials and making money that way as well. So I had three businesses and uh, they all went belly up for one reason or another. The video uh, video production business went, went under because of technologies like YouTube and everybody had a mobile phone that could take video and uh, and so my services were no longer needed, and especially at $4,000 an event, right? Uh, those services were no longer needed, and, and no one was hiring for a video person, a videographer. The direct mail business went under because uh, at, during that particular time, the internet was just getting uh, in full, full steam and the price of postage went up. So you could no longer do direct mail and make it profitable. Nowadays, you gotta pay 65 cents or 67 cents per stamp. Um, back then, it was around 25 cents to send a, a single piece of mail. And uh, before that, even it was between 10 and 15 cents. So 25 cents was a big jump and then it went to 34 cents um, after that. So direct mail becomes something that was not something that a, a direct mail business plus the, the way that we got leads was through magazine subscriptions and magazine subscriptions were no longer a thing in 2005. So um, the way that we got leads also dried up so direct mail kind of become useless because now everything was done through email and through online services as far as uh, information and marketing and, and things like that where people could get information about a product or service the third thing that happened was this um, infomercial thing right so the way we sold things were through television, right? And we'd run infomercials on TV. And the company that I was working for at the time, all of a sudden, I got sued by the FTC uh, for the infomercials that they were running and the infomercials they had run in the past. And uh, so they got sued for $40 million and they were in the middle of a lawsuit. And the very next day, they're phone systems were down, their website was down, and you could no longer be in contact with this company that I was making money uh, by taking orders from the infomercials. So people would call in the 800 number to the infomercials, they'd get routed to my office, and then I would take the call and fulfill the order, or take the order, and I would make a commission by doing that. So, I had to file bankruptcy and I call it the lost decade because after you file bankruptcy you literally have zero credit so anything that you do has to be cash based so everything has to be through cash so if you have no credit you can't you can't get a new car lease you can't get uh, credit cards you can't get uh, I mean, nowadays it's hard to even get uh, rent, right? You, to get an apartment or some other living situation without credit. Um, even phone bills and gas bills and things like that is hard to get without credit. And back then I didn't even have a bank account. Walmart was my bank account for a while, for a couple of years. And it got to a point where Walmart <laughs> wouldn't even cash my checks that are received. So it was really hard and it was quite a struggle. So I sympathize with Joey um, and just want to let you guys know 
that there is a way out of bankruptcy um, if you do have to file. And I recommend if you are in debt over $10,000 and uh, you, instead of struggling trying to pay off that debt, is to file bankruptcy um, even you know when you get in that situation. Just know that you're going to be without credit. So there's a couple different options that you can do um, after you file bankruptcy. The first option is to start producing cash flow and the first well, the quickest way to do that is to go to my website oneinboxapp.com go down to the bottom sign up for the affiliate program and then go to local businesses and start promoting this. This will give you $50 for every business $50 a month for every business that you um, get them into the SaaS software that we have. The software is a service software that we have for local businesses. This is the quickest way to generate cash flow and it doesn't require you to have any capital to get started and it's very easy to sign up for that. The second thing would be to go into my mini course and see the three other modules I have in there about the different types of cash flow that you can do with no money. We also partner with people inside the program so that you don't have to provide any of your own capital to acquire a business or to purchase real estate. Uh, so we work with people in our program, we partner with them, and we allow you to profit 50% on all that you bring us in new business and uh, we have full training in there for you. The second option, and I don't recommend this for everybody, but it would be to start a LLC, right? A limited liability corporation and start building business credit for that corporation. This is going to require you to have at least a thousand dollars to put towards and into a bank account for the LLC. So if you don't have a thousand dollars, I would do option A, which is to go to my website, oneinboxapp.com, and sign up for the affiliate program, start generating cash flow, and uh, do it that way. Um, and then then start your LLC, start building up business credit. Um, there's, if you want to learn more about business credit, go into my mini course where uh, you can set up a phone call with myself and I'd like to walk you through how to set up business credit one-on-one -on -one, depending on your situation. And I'll give you step-by-step -step directions on how to set it up and how to get up to $250,000 in business credit um, over the next 12 months. So uh, that's gonna do it for this video. I just wanted to uh, give you a couple options. Go over to Caleb Hammer's channel. Channel. The link is in the, in, in the video right here. And uh, go check out this video with Joey and see uh, get more information about his situation and uh, subscribe to Caleb Hammer's channel and learn more about financial audits and go to my website at gionroberts.com forward slash go and uh, sign up for my mini course. I'm also going to produce a cash flow early retirement retire younger newsletter and so look forward to that and if you're watching this video to the very end thank you so much please like and subscribe to this channel and thank you so much for listening to the very end of this video it helps me out a lot talk to you soon bye